Do I need to introduce myself? I know who you are. Good. I know who you are. <laughs> My brother's taking a bullet. Stan Lane is in need of medical attention. Well, allow me to address the subject of your brother, Mr. Burns. Christmas, as uh, you're probably aware, is fast approaching. And Christmas this year will hold a unique significance for young Mickey here. Mickey? Because on Christmas Day, I have made plans that he be taken from the jail in Banyan. I hang by the neck until he is dead. Charlie. You're a copper, Stanley, not a judge and jury. Well, clearly, Mr. Burns, I am what I wish to be. So what is it that you want? I want Arthur Burns. I no longer ride with me, brother. Now, I will allow you a moment to think about it. What's happening, Charlie? It's all right, Mikey. It's all right. <laughs> Australia. What fresh hell is this? I've kept company with bad men all my life. I was 22 years in Her Majesty's Land Forces. I've dealt with your type many times. Touch me, brother, again, and I'll kill you. Make no mistakes, Mr. Burns. It will be done. I will civilize this place. The fuck are you talking about, Stanley? Listen to me now, Charlie. Uh, don't speak. 
Hush, Maggie, you'll be fine. Hush. I wish to present you with a proposition. I know where Arthur Burns is. It is a godforsaken place. The blacks won't go there. Not the trackers. Not even my own men. I suppose in time the bounty hunters will get him. But I have other plans. I aim to bring him down. I aim to show that he is a man like any other. I aim to hurt him. When you're ready, sir. And what will most hurt him? Hmm. Well, I thought long and hard about that. And I've realized, Mr. Burns, that I must become a little more inventive in my methods. Don't speak, Mr. Burns. Listen to me now. Don't say a word. I suppose I told you there was a way to save your little brother, Mikey, from the noose. Suppose I gave you a horse and a gun. Suppose, Mr. Burns, I was to give both you and your young brother, Mikey, here a pardon. Suppose I said that I could give you the chance to expunge the guilt beneath which you so clearly labor. Suppose I gave you till Christmas. I suppose you tell me what it is I want from you. Hmm? You want me to kill me, brother? I want you to kill your brother. Arthur Burns is a monster, an abomination. You were right to part company with him, to take Mikey with you. What happened at the Hopkins place was unforgivable. I have never seen such a sickening sight. Did you know that that poor woman, Eliza Hopkins, had a child in her belly? where your brother is unfinished. You have nine days, Mr. Burns.
Troopers! This mount! The man I have brought in is Mike Burns of the Burns Gang. Well, that's one down and two to go, gentlemen. I will civilize this land. Put yourself at home, Mike. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Stanley. You should really not come here. Can a lady visit her husband in his place of work? You've been gone for three days. It's lonely up there at the house. It's so quiet without you. Are you coming home now? Well, I have things to attend to. I'll have Officer Donna escort you home. I'll be back soon. You look terrible, Morris. Yes. Yes, I do. Who is that? But he's no more than a boy. Oh, he's man enough, ma'am. He's man enough indeed. Enough. <laughs> Let's call Mrs. Stanley home and wait there till I return. How long will you be, dear? Later. such things again, do you understand? My apologies, Captain. What happened today on the flats, that's between you and me. Of course, sir. Because there would be consequences were it to become common knowledge. Yes.
Eliza Hopkins was a good Christian woman, and she was my friend. I pray to God that her death was mercifully swift. It was, wasn't it? Martha, do we speak of other things? Come here, Captain Stanley. The world you live in in there. Don't be gloomy, dear. This burden you carry, you might let me carry it too. What in God's name? Christ, sir. It shot me bloody toes off. <laughs> You've nothing to see here, Martha. Go back to bed. Officer Dunn has shot his toe. Martha, go back inside. No, oh, no need for that, sir. No need for that. We are white men, you and I. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Jelon Lamb, citizen of the world, you might say, an adventurer. And if I may be so bold, a man of no little education. And you, sir, by what name? Am I honored to address thee? Of course, sir. Mere details. Mere details. Forgive me, sir, but I've been stuck here with no one but this sorry sack of Hibernian pig shit for conversation. Poor, poor Dan O'Reilly. 
Sit, sir. Drink with me. One more crack about the Irish, Mr. Lamb, and I'll shoot you. Am I clear? Oh, it's the waters of Ennis, sir. Let us drink then to the Irish. No finer race of men have ever peeled a potato. Do you pray, Mr. Lamb? Good Lord, son, no, I do not. I was in days gone by a believer. But, alas, I came to this beleaguered land and the god in me just evaporated. Let us change our toast, sir, to the god who has forgotten us. But first, cardinal rule. Never raise a glass with a man whose name you do not know. My name's Charles Murphy. Uh. Charles! Perhaps you've read on the origin of the species by means of natural selection by Charles Darwin. Oh, don't be thrown by the title. He had some most fascinating things to say. Chilling things. Mr. Darwin spent time studying aboriginals. He claims we are, at bottom, one and the same. <laughs> He infers, Mr. Murphy, that we share a common ancestry with monkeys. <laughs> monkeys! <sighs> Mr. Murphy, Russia, China, the Congo, oh, I have traveled among unknown people in lands beyond the seas. But nothing, nothing could have prepared me for this godforsaken hole. You see, Mr. Murphy, I am something of a fork jewel under. And what fortune do you hunt out here, Mr. Lamb? Oh, that would be my question to you, Mr. Murphy. Come oh, hand me, Murphy, or I'll slit your fucking throat. <laughs> we are white men, sir. Not beasts. The troopers will never catch him. Common force is meaningless, Mr. Murphy, as he squats up there on his impregnable perch. So I wait, Mr. Murphy. I wait. <coughs> Wait here, bounty hunter.
What a vile specimen of humanity. What a little piece of filth. Not really the one that we're looking for, though, is it, Captain? Well, in the end, justice will be done. Hmm, justice. Save your little wisdoms for the mob, Stanley. Has he told you where his brothers are? With due respects, Mr. Fletcher, perhaps it would be wise to allow police work to be done by policemen. Hmm. What a little piece of filth. Still, better than nothing, I suppose. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. My roses are looking lovely. I've got green thumbs, I have. I was just thinking about England. Do you not miss it, Martha? <laughs> There's much to miss. There and here. Let's get rid of that headache. Now, Stanley, eat your breakfast before the flies do. Oh. Made by my own fair hands, them eggs. Mm. The eggs are never tasted so fine, Mum. <laughs> you're a good man, Morris. And you're a good woman, Martha. Do we have company? Yes, I'm afraid we do. Captain! Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. Well, Martha, would you excuse us? It's fine, Morris. No, oh, Martha, please. This is police business. Day you come to my house in that state. Sir, what exactly do you want? We just got back from the Uruka Rangers, sir. We rounded up six rebel vacs, sir. Show and killed one. Thought you want to know about it straight away. Captain? Captain? <coughs> no, leave the door open. It's rank in here. Yes, sir. Are you sure you've put enough iron on these men's sides? They have been adequately secured, sir. Jekyll, get over here. Yes, Captain, sir. Ask them how long they've been hiding up in the ranges. He says they're very tired. <laughs> we have a nice long rest. If you don't open your fucking mouth and stay here, you black bastards! Sergeant. Wait outside. Wait outside the door. I'll call you if and when I need you. Ask them again. <laughs> How long have they been hiding up in the ranges? Kawit me jangan. Nyam bilak majulal nginginan. Bilak ngeri lima. Captain, sir, he said, they're on hide in the ranges. They live in the ranges. And then ask him how long they have lived in the ranges. They've always been living in the ranges, Captain, sir. <coughs> ask him if they've seen a white man up there. Yes, Captain, sir. I'll ask them. Kapla, 
Nyawa balak balanda nge nyanya. Malah kalah ingin balanda. Balah yul nge. Ngeramah gitu kan ya. Apa yang gede kamu? Kayak... They send white men. Apa yang gede kamu? White men cat system. Jesus Christ. I don't mean the police. But this, this man. This man. A man with this man. A, a white man. This man. This man. Can you know what? Young and unique. You know, Mangi? When you know, Mangi, as who you need. Follow in the picture. He live in a cave. Dog man. Big fella. He's a dog man, never sleep. He sit there all day. Sit down in a cave. Why up? He live with small fella and black fella. Cannot catch him. Cannot kill him. He's dog. What? He eats dog? No, Captain, sir. He is dog. He chained to dog. He grows here. He grows teeth sharp. And he grows a tail this way. Long. And he stand with two legs like this. And he goes, ow! Captain is weak, weak man. Oh, so, so you reckon he's weak? <laughs> Lawrence, I Cox. Fuck out the cops. Come out here to sort out the niggas. Fucking, he's doing nothing. Those black <laughs> bastards, they're running all over us. I chose the wrong man for the job. Because this isn't London, it's not England, this is fucking Australia. Right? Right. Right. It's just fucking Did weak. I say I wanted to fuck? Captain's wife? Oh, will you go oh, back to sleep, Paul? Of course. Yeah, I would like to fuck his wife. You know, if I was married to that bucket of pig's chop, you'd call a fucking wife. I'd want to fuck his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fuck his wife. I want to fuck his wife. Oh, I could fuck her so oh, yeah. yeah, all right. We all want to fuck <laughs> Mrs. Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> she certainly isn't getting anything with a good captain, is she? <laughs> You know why? Oh, because he's weak. <laughs> he's got other things on his mind. Because he really fucked up this time. Yes, hey. You got the boy here. You let the other one go. Hey?
Good afternoon, Mr. Broussard. Remember to save a turkey for me. Of course, Mrs. Stanley. Is everything all right? Go, Mr. I'm sorry, what did you say? Mrs. Stanley, perhaps you better ask your husband. raised himself from the dead. You're much better now. You're much better, because I fixed it. You don't look better to me. No sign of the thing I relished the most while I was away. I was not having to see your fucking face all the time. If it weren't for me and my crack shooting, you'd be fucking dingo dinner. 30 yards away I was. And poof, blew that black bastard's head right off. It's beautiful. So a bit of respect. I might just have to shoot you. My new Winchester. It's all right, Charlie. You want 
I know why I've come back. I know why you've come back, Charlie. Look at that. Be humble of heart, Charlie. This is the end of things. You're my brother, Charlie. You belong with me. We are a family. All of us. Just getting reacquainted. Samuel. Tolerance, Charlie. Which I was a boy. He's a vicious little cretin. <laughs> Where's Mikey, Charlie? Oh, Mikey stayed behind in Clarence. Left Mikey alone. He met a girl. Mikey met a girl. Hi. Mikey met a girl. <laughs> What's her name, Charlie? Molly. Molly. Molly O'Boyle. Molly O'Boyle. A red-headed Corleone, no doubt. Aye. Red. Like the sunset. Like the sunset. Does she do this? Molly, old boy. I'm feeling a bit tired right now, Arthur. Is she a farmer's daughter? Can she cook a good lunch? Oh, just stop it. <clears throat> Mikey's not the same stuff as us. We flung to the depths, you and I. He worships you, you know. There was a time we both did. Mikey deserves better. You're right to leave. Take him with you. I need to rest. Mary, old boy. Molly. 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 Christmas my true love gave to me five cats a flogging, four nooses swinging, three crows a pecking, two dogs a pissy, and little Mikey hanging from a pear tree. <laughs> Only five more days to go, Mikey. Sergeant Lawrence said that the boy that you were holding at the lockup was man enough. What did he mean by that? Sergeant Lawrence is an ignorant thug with the moral fortitude of a snake's disregard. What did he mean? What did the boy do? He's a member of the Burns gang. There are some things that a woman I should know not that, be privy to. And I asked you a question. And I asked you not to visit Just me. Just tell my place me what work. he did to Eliza. Enough! She was my friend! Enough! That's enough. Headache, Captain Stanley.
So what can I do for you, Mr. Fletcher? Word has it that your men captured half a dozen rebel blacks two days ago, and that one was shot in the process. Do you have a problem with that? Yes, Captain, I do. Word came this morning from Eight Mile Creek that Dan O'Reilly's place was attacked. Are you sure it was blacks? Dan O'Reilly had so many spears in him that he resembled your good old garden variety English hedgehog. It's simple, Captain. It's called the law of reciprocity. Kill one of them, and they're going to kill one of ours. Do the job I brought you here to do, hmm? If you have to kill one, make sure you bloody will kill them all. Well, I'll send some troopers out today. Well, is our business here finished? I'm going to have Mike Burns flogged. What? 100 lashes. Martha. Thank you. I thought you gentlemen might like a little tea. Please, sit down. Thank you, Martha. That would be lovely. Thank you, Martha. Is there anything else I can get you? No, thank you, Mother. This is lovely. Well, then, I'll leave you two gentlemen alone. Clever and well-bred woman, your wife. Well for yourself, Captain. Word has it that you had Charlie Burns and you let him go. Word has it that you offered him some kind of deal. Tell me this isn't so, Captain. Word has it that you promised those animals who raped Eliza Hopkins a pardon if Charlie Burns brought back his brother. A pardon for the annihilation of the Hopkins family. Are you completely out of your mind? Listen to me. Mike Burns is a simpleton. He spends all day in his cell crying like a child. It is my belief that he is not responsible for his actions. I'm not interested in your beliefs, Captain Stanley. Who do you think you are? The judge and the jury? Arthur Burns must be stopped. It is he who is responsible for this outrage. And I know that Charlie Burns will stop at nothing to protect his younger brother, Mike. So all we need to do now is wait. Wait? My God, man, they raped a woman. Tomorrow morning, I want Mike Burns flogged. As I said, 100 lashes. This will kill him. So be it. What if I'm right? What if Charlie Burns does as I ask? What if he comes back? Then we will hang the lot of them. Good day. Stay here. Do not let anyone in. I shall return tomorrow. Martha, do you hear me? Please, stay here.
What's going on in here? Bro, I believe Officer Davenport and Officer Matthews were entertaining the prisoners. Sir. Is that right, Sergeant? Yes, sir. But I got a job for you. Yes. You have unfinished business in the Aruka Ranges. Sir. Rebel Black Sergeant. Within two hours, you must find Jacko and recruit some more troopers and depart. Fucking snake. Why are you still standing there? You've been dismissed. Where's Charlie? This is Stanley. I don't know, sir. I don't know. Bring him out, Stanley. Stand aside, Stanley. We want justice. I'll shoot the first person who lays hands on Mike Burns. Give him to us. Are you going to shoot your wife as well, Captain? Arthur? She was with child. For God's sake. Martha, if this flogging goes ahead, it will be our death sentence. What if it had been me? Most bloodthirsty villains this country has ever seen. Rapist, looter, murderer. His crimes are of the most heinous kind. Before the year is out, this man will hang. Today, he will be flogged. A message to all who dare transgress the laws of this land. One hundred lashes. Proceed. One! Two! Three! Oh, Peggy Gordon, you are my darling. Come 
come sit you down upon my knee and tell to me the very reason why I am slighted so by thee. I wish I was in some lonesome valley where womankind could not be found and little birds sing upon the branches and every moment a different sound Oh, Peggy Gordon, you are my darling. Come sit you down upon my knee and tell to me the very Why I am slighted so by thee. He could shame a nightingale. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Go on.
Arthur, you must eat. Let Toby's make you some soup. Did something, Martha, please. Mm. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, please, sir. I just wanted to protect you. I had an idea about justice and for the town, for the country, for you, for you. And now, I don't know. Strange, You what is? Oh. Good news. Charging lorry? Over there. What? Where? See it? Hard to see it. At foot of the ranges. Well, I can't see a bloody thing. What? Smoke. Love. Love is the key. Love and family. For what are night and day? The sun, the moon, the stars. Without love. And those you love around you. For what could be more hollow than to die alone? Unloved. The fuck was that? Fucking trooper's rifle. Four fifties. Shooting blacks. Be calm, Samuel. Shots are miles away.
Mario boy, my horse. Fuck left Danny boy out in the sun. <laughs> hey Jacko, you lazy bugger. I told you to bury that bastard last night. <laughs> he sticks worse than you. Jacko! You got the wrong fucking black man. Slowly now, Sergeant. Put your privates back in your pants and turn around. A copper. You fire that gun. You'll have eight more alive here. Fair enough. Step into the shade. Sergeant. To the back. <laughs> Charlie found you then. Stanley's little mate. Over there. That's right. Stay. Lay down, Sergeant. Hey. Oh, lie down. Give me. Something you don't know. Hush. No, Sergeant. Hush. Your brothers come to kill you. I can help. Help me. Here's your knife back, you dog. There's something I want to tell you. I've been having a dream most nights. I've kept it from you, but I don't suppose it matters now. I'm in a room. It's our bedroom, I think, and I'm searching for something. And then suddenly, I feel a presence in the room, and I stand up, and I turn around. And there in the doorway is Eliza Hopkins. And she looks frightful. Her, her dress is all creased and torn. And covered in blood, and her face too, all battered and bruised and splashed with blood. Martha. But listen to this. In her arms, she's holding something. I, I, I can't see what it is. Because it's covered by her hair. And then she walks towards me. Very slowly. She hands me a tiny bundle. And I look down. And I see that it's a baby. A newborn. And this baby, oh, it's a beautiful baby, Morris. And it, it opens its eyes. And then... I feel a pressure on my hand and I look down and I see that the baby has taken hold of my finger and it's squeezing it tight in its tiny fist. Then I wake up. But after I wake, it's, 
It's the strangest thing. I can still feel, I can still feel the pressure of that dream baby's hand. are not so one of my many talents. And it appears that you are singularly bereft in any talents whatsoever, Mr. Burns. To be speared by a savage? How extraordinarily quaint. Easy, Mr. Burns. Day's work either. Or what is an Irishman but a nigger turned inside out? Now, I'm going to sit down on this log. Nice and easy, sir. to stop saving your life, Mother Charlie. All things considered. Last night and day, brother, both sweet things, sun, moon, and stars, all sweet things. Likewise, there's a wind on the east, Life is very sweet, brother. Life is very sweet, brother. Who would wish to die? George Burrow, I believe. A worthy writer. And a beautiful sentiment, sir. But you're not my brother. Why can't you ever just stop me? Now hang on, Mikey, come Christmas Day. What's Christmas, Charlie? I have some writing to do. Brother! Woman. I never doubted it for a moment. Look real good, Mrs. Thank you, Toby.
snow. Ho, ho, ho. Who is it? Dr. Bantry. Are you alone? Yes. Then you may come in. It doesn't look good, Morris. The boy is dying. Nothing I can do. Sure is pretty. Ah. You can never get your fill of nature, Samuel, to be surrounded by it, to be stilled. It, it salves the heart, the mountains, the trees, the endless plains, the moon, the mirror, the stars. Every man can be made quiet and complete. Even the lowliest misanthrope or the most wretched of sinners. What's a misanthrope, Arthur? Some bugger who fucking hates every other bugger. Hey, I didn't ask you, you black bastard. He's right, Sam. A misanthrope is one who hates humanity. Is that what we are? Misanthropes? Good Lord, no. We're a family. <laughs> Christmas, Captain. Dirty mongrel, we've got you. How am I doing? You're doing just fine, Sergeant Stort. Keep moving, you dusty devil, don't lag. And keep your lustful eyes to the ground, you lecherous dog, or I'll whip the filthy black hide right off you. Good morning, man. What's happened? I don't know. It must be some of Lawrence's lot. Mikey! Hey, this one's pissed himself! Oh. Where are the keys, you bastard? 
bastards! Fucking case! Grandson. Well, we're going visiting. That's right. It's all your fault, Charlie. You should never have left us. Would you like me to go?
for what we are about to receive. May the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm. Guard the woman, Simon. Of your seat again, ma'am. I'll stick this fork through your fucking eye. Shut up. I said, shut up. Christmas. What does that say? To my darling wife, whom I love so much, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Anything so beautiful. That's us. You won't want to miss this, Captain.
to be with me, brother. What are you going to do now? Said the moon to the stars in the sky. Soon said the wind that followed him home. Who said the cloud that started to cry? Me said the riders dry as a bone. Who said the sun that melted the ground? Why said the river that refused to run? Where said the thunder without a sound? Here said the rider and took up his gun. To the moon in the sky. No, said the trees that started to moan. No, said the dust that blinded his eyes. Yes, said the rider as white as a bone. No, said the moon that rose from his sleep. No, said the cry of the dying sun. No, said the planets that started to weep. Yes, said the rider and laid down his gun. Cheeks and rosy cheeks, Jesus loves. 